Hey everybody, I hope you're doing okay, or at least hanging in there. It's Dis Thunder from the Foosh, and by popular demand, today's custom showcase is going to be the Batman Rogues Gallery. Now, if you're new to the channel or just clicked on this by accident, when I do a Dis Thunder's custom showcase, it's basically just an, an excuse to show off some custom figures. And for the sake of consistency, I try to keep them all in a uh, central theme, be it character or style or whatever. As with before, these run the gamut from being pretty straightforward, you know, repaint, part swap kind of things to involved and I'll let you decide which ones are which. There are some fairly new customs in here and a few I've had for a couple years. But really the point is to show them off and give you a chance to maybe inspire you to make some of your own. Now with intros out of the way, let's get into it with our first custom, which is going to be Deadshot. Floyd Lawton's design has been pretty consistent since he got his first major redesign back in the late 70s um, from Engelhart and Rogers. And it stayed pretty consistent even up to the cinematic universe. So the natural choice for me is the Netflix Daredevil body, which if you've been with me for, again, any period of time, you may recognize I love using that figure for a base. And from there, I mean, he's really a, a pretty light-duty custom. I recognize a Netflix Punisher vest there with some recoloring, a DC Direct head, um, and the, like, the web gear and the pouches are from a few different Marvel Legends. In particular, the movie Crossbones for those, uh, those shoulder pieces there. Now, for his forearm guns, I have to go a little bit of gun geek on you. I didn't like the idea of them being pistols, because the way most pistols recoil would make that very difficult to use functionally. So I went with the MAC-10s. Just uh, disregard that ammo behind the wrist gauntlet there. That doesn't really make sense for that gun. I guess you could make a rifle caliber MAC-10. Don't recommend it, though. Anyway, pretty straightforward, pretty easy custom, and I'm really surprised we don't have an official one yet. He feels like an obvious choice, though, down the road. Next figure, in no particular order, is Raish al Ghul. And yeah, it's Raish. Christopher Nolan can kiss my ass. This is another relatively easy custom, in my opinion, owing the majority of the suit and gear to the Ragnarok Thor figure from Mezco. I went back to the classic Jim Lee head. Although it was not my first choice, I tried to use the Arkham City one first, but it just it doesn't hold up, I'm afraid. Whereas this one, surprisingly, I think it still does. The Arkham City did uh, provide me with a good-looking sword and a belt, though, so it wasn't a complete loss. And as much as I feel like no figure is really ever complete, I'd love to have like a like a lace-up shirt and maybe a cloak for him uh, in the future. And speaking of customs that are never really done, this is tentatively my go-to Joker custom figure for right now. He has a pretty eclectic part mix. Uh, mix Max upper body, Mezco crown prints lower, and the Gaslight Joker head, easily my favorite Joker sculpt uh, from any line. Obviously, he borrows heavily from the Sean Murphy White Knight look, and I suppose he's relatively faithful to that with just the addition of a shoulder harness and uh, chest rig that I made for him. That part I quite like. It actually has uh, the movie Harley Quinn's revolver and speed loaders uh, incorporated into it. The big advantage of this figure is obviously he moves much better than any factory Joker can. And while that alone's a major plus, I feel like eventually a proper uh, matching dress shirt and jacket would be really good. I'd get more mileage out of him as a more uh, traditional Joker, I think. Honestly, I'm kind of curious what you guys think. If it's something I should leave as is, or if there's an accessory I'm not thinking of that would kind of put it over. Like I mentioned before, the Joker's never really been my favorite villain, so I have a hard time feeling really inspired when I work on a figure of him. That's less of a problem for Bane here, created by two of my favorite comic pros, Chuck Dixon and Graham Nolan. This particular appearance owes more to his appearance in Legacy, which would have been late 90s. A little more uh, militaristic looking, obviously. The vest, um, we'll pretend that it's Arkham Origin inspired. We can do that, right? The big selling point was the Mattel head from their Evergreen line a couple years ago. I like how distinct it is with still being very recognizable as Bane, kind of like a cross between the movie and the comic book. And I just slapped all that stuff together on a Storm Collectibles Hogan body. If you want a kind of realistic Bane, I feel like that's the way to go. Like everybody else, I go back and forth on wanting him to be crazy, stupid, huge, and somewhat realistic. And that consequently helps him pair up with my Azrael Night Quest Batman. I'm just going to include him here because while I think he looks pretty damn good, he's not a real intensive custom. In fact, most you old figure hounds recognize his parts right off the bat, no pun intended. This is just the Mattel DC Universe Classics figures, gloves, and upper body pieces attached to a Mezco 112 Tactical Batman with a little bit of uh, strategic paint work. He doesn't 100% scratch that itch, but for the final appearance, I think he's pretty close to what I want. Now this one, I don't think I'll ever be revisiting. This is the Scarecrow. And he makes use of that 2010-2011 Arkham Asylum DC Direct head and arm. I think I actually picked those up on the sales floor at San Diego. Take it from Uncle Dis Thunder. Never throw anything away. 
And that's mounted up on a Freddy Krueger base body with some Dawn of the Dead khaki pants. And I took a spare Judge Dredd cloak and re-stitched it up into his kind of tattered tunic kind of thing he's got there. And I'm going to claim happy accident rather than divine inspiration on this because the open scratched up sores of the Freddy Krueger arms and, and the tattered cloak and the flame trooper canister on his back, I feel like they evoke the Arkham look without having to be specifically Arkham Asylum, which kind of makes this my scarecrow for all seasons, I think. Despite being a little bit more involved than some of the other figures, I feel like the ends justified the means here, and I'm really happy with how it turned out overall. And lastly, we have the Riddler, a custom I made almost out of necessity and because the fodder just fell in my lap. That Jim Carrey head is from the Kick-Ass 2 figure NECA made. Sorry, I actually don't remember the character's name. I didn't see the movie. But the big find was that 95 Kenner brain drain accessory. And having done several Batman Forever inspired figures recently, or at least homages, it kind of felt like it was fate's way of telling me I needed to make a Riddler. So his body is spare parts for the most part. That's why he's so swole. He has an old figures toy company suit. And I went with the Magneto stuff really because they were the right color, but I kind of like how it looks techy, a little bit of Kirby. To my knowledge, Jack Kirby never drew the Riddler, but I'm still cool with it. And that backpack attaches to the back of that collar via a magnet. Honestly, Riddler was never high on my list if he was ever on the list at all, but now that I've got it done, I sort of regret not starting one sooner. I have some other Batman Forever stuff planned, so we'll be seeing more of him again soon, I'm thinking. And there we go. Hopefully it was as much fun to watch as it was to make, because I had a great time doing this for you guys. As usual, find more of my stuff on Foosh Dis Thunder at Instagram and over here on this here YouTube channel I made. Take care. We'll talk again soon.